All right, local football flavor fans, Joe and Bob here with a breakdown of the first round. And now this is our opinions of the first down. You know you can trust us with information. We're just taking you along our thinking behind these picks and what we think was going on in the war rooms at the time. Now we're recording this before the second round begins. So a lot of the things that we say need to be taken into consideration that they have not taken the next round yet. We are just taking these as standalone picks. Mm -hmm. So for anybody that missed it, the Raiders selected Tyree Wilson at seven, uh, edge rusher. The Falcons drafted B. John Robinson at eight. Uh, Jalen Carter was drafted by the Eagles after they jumped up one spot with the Bears to uh, at nine. At 10, um, the Bears took their much-needed offensive tackle in Darnell Wright. At 11, Tennessee plays it safe and takes a guard, an offensive tackle, Peter Skaronsky. And then at 12, the Detroit Lions take Jameer Gibbs, a running back, out of Alabama. Now, as Joe and I were saying before this, uh, before we start talking here, we were saying this is the running back land for whatever reason. We th th this. To me, it is extremely baffling that for numerous years, ESPN has told us, well, no running back really deserves to be drafted between 1 and 15. They have to be super extra special to be drafted between 1 and 15. And every fan has gotten it into their mind to say, oh, we can't draft a running back. So when you see a running back get drafted in the top 10, you're like, what? What just happened here? Now, my biggest what isn't the one that you're thinking about because my biggest what is actually Bijan Robinson to the Falcons. I that's the better one. Understand this pick at all, and I'm going to harken back to what we've discussed about the Falcons in the past. All right, the Falcons defense is trash. Sure, is. absolute dumpster fire trash. Their offense is the one of the most, if not the most, run heavy offense in the league sure. last year. They already had 1,000-yard rushers on that team, and they still lost. So you're telling me that by adding at eight, when I can get a premium edge rusher, when I can get a premium quarterback, when I can get a premium offensive tackle to help and support my group, when I can go out and potentially get a quarterback that isn't Desmond Ritter, because we don't know, what's happening with Desmond Ritter's life here. You go and you take arguably the best running back that we've seen in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. I'm not fighting that B. John Robinson is the best running back in this draft. What I'm saying is, is that the Falcons don't need to take him. Now, this is the same thing that I'm about to say about Detroit. But I think it's more telling for the Falcons, that they're taking B. John Robinson. Because just as I said about Anthony Richardson, this is a statement pick. This is telling me that this, they this are... This, to me, is the most statement pick of the entire draft. They are comfortable with the team that they have, mm -hmm. and they are willing to move forward with Desmond Ritter at quarterback. They've seen enough out of him to say, this is our guy. Now, they might take somebody later down in the draft. That's fine. But you are specifically saying, this is our guy right now. You get Bijan, you have London, you have maybe a healthy Pitts, you have Algier, who is who looked pretty talented last year. Um, but they're still going to have the same inadequacies that they had last year on defense, and this is going to be a constant. You can't, and this was this, the problem for the Falcons last year. Once they started losing, they had to stop running. If you have yeah. to stop running and your main weapon is a running back, well, we saw how that worked for the Chargers with Eckler, we saw that how that worked when the Giants were behind with Saquon Barkley. It doesn't matter if he can catch the ball out of the backfield. It doesn't matter that he can pound and run you into the face. If you lose, if you're losing that game because your defense sucks, Bijan Robinson isn't going to make a difference. And the reason Texas well, was good, the reason Texas was good last year is because they actually had a quarterback that made a difference. So that Bijan Robinson could make a difference. And you'll see that in a lot of running backs throughout the league. And this mm -hmm. is the same reason that I think, in actuality, 
I dislike where the Detroit Lions selected Jameer Gibbs, but I don't dislike the pick of Jameer Gibbs for the Detroit Lions because the Detroit Lions are built to stay ahead or built to score. And one of the primary things that we said about the Detroit Lions was we are uncertain about DeAndre Swift's health. Mm -hmm. Well, we are also uncertain about Montgomery's health because Montgomery also tends to get hurt a lot too. So taking a guy that has the same running style as a player you already have on your as team. Swift, yeah. So your your offensive line already knows how to block for a guy like this. Mm-hmm. You have now given you have now built yourself up a nice little reserve and a cheap reserve too um, of players that you can keep and that will grind it out for you. And Detroit is better built to take a guy like this because they actually won last year. This is well, a luxury so, pick in a way, but I don't so, think they should have taken him here. I, I agree with you that, that they didn't need to take Gibbs there, but the thing is, after Gibbs, there is no other running back worth considering in the fourth round. Um, so there's a giant talicamp between two and three. I understand where Atlanta's coming from. They believe that this is the best running back entering the draft since Henry. Their coach was Henry's offensive coordinator, and their entire mindset is. Our defense sucks, so we're not going to keep it on the field. We're just going to run the ball and try to hold the ball for 47 minutes every single game in a league that's designed by rules not to let you do that. But that's what they're going to try to do. That, that's where they put themselves. But it didn't work and, this year. Well, it probably it, it only works if Ritter throws the ball downfield to Pitts. If they can do a play-action game that pushes the ball downfield to Pitts, it'll work. If not, it won't. But if you start if you start churning, and this guy is the Henry that he's projected oh, yeah. to be, it might not matter if he's not great this year, if he has the longevity of a Henry where exactly. he starts churning it out. I am because it does way. create a nice landing spot if you get the quarterback next year. Right. And the two those two players, like I said, are going to teams that do have it's a they do have running back luxury because you already know who you have on your team is talented enough to do the job that you've asked them to do. And now you've added in somebody else who is also extremely talented. So if somebody gets hurt, you always you you have the opportunity to not even not even be faced by this and you can continue to do it. But based off of what we saw, it feels like that the that the Falcons and and, and I get why the Falcons went with Bijan here. But, man, Jalen Carter was right there. Jalen Carter was the second best player in the draft, and Philadelphia basically stole the draft. I mean, to get him at nine, and the reason they traded up was so to make sure Chicago didn't trade to someone else. Yeah. Philadelphia saw their eyes watering with, why is this talented of a player here? By the way, we're going to get to this later when we get to the last section of this. Philadelphia is rebuilding Georgia's defense. I mean, it's not a bad idea <laughs> between the fact they have both of the great D tackles they had. Last year, they took the middle linebacker. They are building Georgia's defense. And if you're going to copy a college defense, it's gonna that's the one to copy. Mm-hmm. So when you look at the Eagles, that's a team that knows exactly what they are. We're winning the trenches. There's no way around it. And deal with it. Basically, mm-hmm. we're going to put pressure on you nonstop. Deal with it. Try to win. You're... You're Dak Prescott. You're afraid. It's not going to work. We're going to win the division. See you guys in December. And that's how the Eagles have built themselves. I love the way the Eagles are built. Um, Jalen yeah, Carter was my favorite pick of the of this section and possibly the whole first round in terms of value. Thing, and who they got too, Joe, is that outside of uh, outside of right outside of the offensive tackles, mm-hmm. we saw a pretty decent amount of luxury picks in this range. And I never thought I would see in the range of seven to 12 that we'd be talking about luxury picks. Well, that's because Philadelphia raped new Orleans last year. This is the ramifications of it. They definitely, that that definitely happened. And the fact that, you know, we had, we had Detroit, we had, um, and we had the Falcons taking running backs. That doesn't often happen in in this day and age, but going Mm -hmm. on to the, to the, 
to the players that you know you might not look at here is these offensive linemen. Darnell mm-hmm. Wright is what exactly and I and I texted this to you last night. I said it is a solidly unsexy pick. It is, but it was the right pick. It was the right pick, and I didn't think I'd see that from the Bears, but the Bears needed a guy they could protect whatever Justin Fields decides to do this year. And that was run, the right run move. Run pass and then run some more. Justin Fields. And it was, that, it was the right move to do it. And Tennessee, you know you need to keep Derrick Henry on the field. You know you need to pound it. So you go out and get a guy that's going to not only protect your quarterback, but is going to be good in the run game. My, my problem with it, uh, of the lineman is Tennessee's because he's his arms are too short. He's got little T-Rex arms relative to the size of his body to play tackle in the NFL. And you do not, you should not use a top 12 pick on a guard. You don't need to. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they did. Well, yeah, they, they're they going to try him a tackle. But by week seven, he's going to be your guard. Um, yeah. and, and they should have gone with Jones. They absolutely should have. They would be better off for it, knowing you have your tackle spot. But Tennessee is also one of these teams that basically their whole line imploded, and whether they replace a guard or a tackle is both a need. That's just not how you should do a pick that high. Mm-hmm. Get the guaranteed left tackle that you know is going to be there and fix it. So while the one from Tennessee – the University of Tennessee, that is, guaranteed left tackle, never moving off of it. When we look at – I believe it's Schwarzky. That's how you say it, right? Yeah, Skaronsky or something like Skaronsky, that. Skaronsky, that's right. Sorry. Um, he, he's he's going to end up being inside. So they could have had Jones from Georgia be a solid left tackle. That's what you use those high picks for. And I believe they took the wrong player with the right idea. So – when I look at, at the Tennessee Titans, that's that's the thing that I think that the ball was dropped the most out of this group. And then we didn't Aside, talk of course, about the from Raiders. Detroit reach Young Gibbs. The Ra- the Raiders just got another edge rusher. They need you one. Can't, you can't go wrong with another edge rusher ever. No, you can't. When you pair it with Max Crosby, mm-hmm. you've got Tyree Wilson, Max Crosby. That's going to be pretty good because they know their division and they know that they, they need, need to back some point. They yeah. need to know they need to beat Justin Herbert. So they went out there and they did it. Kudos to them. Very smart decision. In my it's mind. possibly the, the only smart decision the Raiders have made the entire offseason. Mm-hmm. I agree. 